Brothers and sisters, aloha. aloha. It is my privilege to introduce my eternal companion, Finau Hafoka. Finau was born in Tonga to his parents, Siosaya Pulupulu and Kalotia Hafoka of Foui, Tonga. He is the oldest of five children, one brother and three sisters. Finau moved to New Zealand when he was 14 years old and attended Hillary College in Otara. He joined the church when he was a senior in high school because of the influence of his good friends. He came to BYU Hawaii in 1980 and got married to his dream girl <laughs> in the Lai Hawaii Temple and raised his family in Kahuku. He now received his Bachelor of Social Work from BYU Hawaii and a master degree in counseling psychology from Chaminade University. He was employed by the state of Hawaii as a school counselor for 30 years. He now serves as a bishop, state president, mission president, and now serving as the president of the Laie Hawaii Temple. His motto is found in Matthew 6, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. His most important accomplishment and possession are his eternal family, his wife, eight children, and 16 grandchildren, and his membership in the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. Brother and, and sisters, Finau Hafoka. I want to thank Lord for the invitations of the Spirit, as well as the musical number ushering in the Spirit. And I'm feel overwhelmed. Sister Hafok and I are honored to be with you. President Kawe. Thank you for the invitation to share our testimony with your faculty, staff, and you students. We have fond memories of this special place. This is where we met and started our eternal family 40 plus years ago. We are forever grateful for this very special place, be where you are away. Our world today is filled with chaos and confusion, wars and rumors of wars, and many are lost because of the conflicting messages received from all directions. As the Lord hastened his work, so is Satan. Satan knows he's running out of time, so he tries his very best to take down as many people as he can with him. Fortunately, we have the restored gospel of Jesus Christ and the living prophet to safely guide us. Today, I want to speak about living prophet, seer, and revelator, and why we should follow him. If I can tell the why, maybe you can figure out the what and how to follow the prophet. Heavenly Father loves us so much that he provides a savior and redeemer to save us. In addition, he provides a watchman on the tower to warn us when the enemy is approaching and provide direction to safety. I love the words of 
the primary song. Follow the prophet, follow the prophet. Follow the prophet, don't go astray. Follow the prophet, follow the prophet. Follow the prophet, he knows the way. In this confusing world, it's very comforting to follow someone who knows the way. Someone who speaks to God and God speaks to him. Someone the Lord trusts to share his plan and even his secrets. Someone who sees the future and gives us the needed warnings. However, receiving warnings and following the warnings are two different things. I pray that we follow the counsel of the living prophet by doing the things he invited us to do. It's not what we know, but what we do will bless and protect us in these difficult times. Since January of this year, we studied the Old Testament and learned of prophets like Enoch, Noah, and Abraham. The Book of Mormon and the teaching of the living prophets have increased our understanding of the prophets of old and their experiences. I pray that we learn from the past so we don't have to make the same mistake again. Let us review a few principles regarding the prophet of God. First, God speak to the prophet. When he said, And it came to pass that Enoch journeyed in the land among the people. And as he journeyed, the Spirit of God descended out of heaven and abode upon him. And he heard a voice from heaven saying, Enoch, my son, prophesy unto these people and say unto them, Repent, for thus saith the Lord, I am angry with these people, and my fierce anger is kindled against them. For their hearts have waxed hard, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes cannot see afar off. Close quote. God told Enoch first, you are my son. And second, to warn the people and tell them to repent. God has specific and direct on why he anger is kindled against the people. First, their hearts have waxed hard. Second, their ears are dull. And third, their eyes cannot see afar. Today, we continue to have the same problem, and we're given the same warning from our living prophet. The message of prophets, seers, and revelators is to warn people and invite them to come unto Christ through repentance. When we change, we have a new heart, full of compassion, with ears that can truly listen for understanding, and eyes they can see and differentiate between good and evil. Brothers and sisters, have we heed the prophet's counsel? It is not what we know, but what we do will save us. God also spoke to Noah when he said, and I quote, And it came to pass that Noah prophesied and taught the things of God, even as it was in the beginning. And the Lord said unto Noah, My spirits are not always strive with man, for he shall know that all flesh shall die, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. And if men do not repent, I will send in the flood upon them. Close quote. God gave Noah the same message with specific consequences that he would send the floods upon them if they do not repent. We know very well the outcome of the story. 
only Noah and his family were saved. The restored gospel of Jesus Christ and the living prophet will guide us to safety. God spoke to Abraham and said, and I quote, And it came to pass, when I was come near to enter into Egypt, the Lord said unto me, Behold, Sarai, thy wife, is a very fair woman to look upon. Therefore, it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see her, they will say, She is his wife, and they will kill you, but they will save her alive. Therefore, see that you do on this wise. Let her say unto the Egyptians, She is thy sister, and thy soul shall live. And it came to pass that I, Abraham, told Sarai, my wife, all that the Lord has said unto me. Therefore say unto them, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. God spoke to Abraham with a great sense of humor. I love what he said to Abraham. Please forgive me, but allow me to add my non-scriptural version here. God said to Abraham, look, you have a fair, young, and beautiful wife. I know the Egyptian men very well. If they see her with you as her husband, you're gone. Your history. So here's the plan. Have her tell them you are her brother. Don't say anything, just let her do all the talking, okay? If you do that, your life will be spared. So off they went. Abraham thanked his sister for saving his life. God spoke to his prophets of old and continues to speak to his living prophet today. What are President Nelson's invitation to us today? Have we applied his counsel in our lives? It is not what we know, but what we do. Second, God allows his prophet to see the future. We refer to the prophet as a seer. According to the guide to the scriptures, a seer is a someone God authorized to see with spiritual eyes things that God has hidden from the world and knows the past, present, and the future. Nephi had desired to see the things his father had seen. In Nephi chapter 11, verse 13 to 18, and I quote, And it came to pass that I looked and beheld the great city of Jerusalem and also other cities. And I beheld the city of Nazareth. And in the city of Nazareth, I beheld a virgin. And she was exceedingly fair and white. And it came to pass that I saw the heavens open. And an angel came down and stood before me. And he said unto me, Nephi, what beholdest thou? And I said unto him, A virgin, most beautiful and fair above all other virgins. And he said unto me, Knowest thou the condescensions of God? And I said unto him, I know that he loveth his children. Nevertheless, I do not know the meaning of all things. And he said unto me, Behold, the virgin whom thou seest is the mother of the Son of God, after the manner of the flesh. Close quote. God allows Nephi to see things, even events and people ahead of his time, even the Messiah and his mother Mary. Nephi also saw John the Baptist. They would baptize the Lamb of God. He saw the Savior teaching and ministering to people. He even saw the Savior lifted up upon the cross and slain for the sin of the world. Our living prophet today, President Nelson, sees the past, present, and the future, just like 
Nephi. Let me share with you my very first experience with a living prophet many years ago in Auckland, New Zealand. When I was in high school and not yet a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, my uncle and his family, who is a member of the church, invited me to attend a special conference where the prophet would be speaking. Prior to this, I didn't know there was a living prophet on earth. I knew of prophets in Old and New Testaments, but never knew a living prophet. So I accepted the invitations and off we went. The saints in New Zealand were anxiously preparing for the special conference and the arrival of President Spencer W. Kimball, the living prophet at the time. The story was told by Russell M. Nelson. Both President and Sister Kimball had temperature of 104 degrees before they left American Samoa to New Zealand. They were coughing violently, nauseated, and most miserable. Russell M. Nelson, the prophet's attending physician at the time, recalled that President Kimball was very sick, and he and D. Arthur Haycock, President Kimball's secretary, assisted him into the airplane for the flight to New Zealand. One official scolded Dr. Nelson for allowing President Kimball to get on the plane, saying, anyone can see that he is too sick to get on the airplane and fly to New Zealand. You should leave him here in Pangopango where he can go to the hospital and get the aid that he needs. Nevertheless, President and Sister Kimpo were settled on the plane with blankets while their fevers raised between 102 and 104 degrees. When they arrived in New Zealand, President and Sister Kimpo were rushed, not to the hospital, but to the home of the temple president and they immediately went to bed. President Kimpo asked President Eldon Tanner, his counselor, to handle the planned reception with the Maori Queen, since he himself was too sick to go. He continued, and I quote, Sister Kimpo and I will not make it to the cultural activities planned for this evening because of our illness. The doctor thinks we should not attend. Therefore, will you please excuse us and begin the meeting on time? Express our regrets to the congregation. We will try to conserve our strength in order to make it to the general sessions of the area conference tomorrow morning." Close quote. President Tanner agreed and left. Dr. Nelson remained with President and Sister Kimball while his wife, Denzel, went with the other brethren and their wives to the stadium at the Church College of New Zealand for the cultural program. All was quiet at the temple president's home while the prophet and his wife slept. Brother Nelson recalled what happened then. I was reading in President Kimball's room when he awakened and said, Brother Nelson, what time was that program to begin this evening? I said, at seven o'clock, President Kimball. He said, what time is it now? I replied, it's almost seven. Noting that he was soaked in perspirations, I thought his fever may have broken, which indeed it had. His temperature was now 98 degrees. He said, tell Sister Kimball we are going. Several thoughts flashed through my mind in that incident, in that instant culminating in a decision that it would be inadvisable for me to say anything about it, being medically inadvisable for him to go. So I quickly went in and said to Sister Kimball, we are going. They each hurried, prepared, and went to the car that had been made available. So President and Sister Kimball, Brother Haycock and I drove the short distance from the Temple President's home to the Church College Stadium where the activities were being held. As the car entered the stadium, there was a very loud shout that erupted spontaneously. It was so sudden that I wondered if it might have been a clap of thunder. 
The car was driven around the track to the place where President and Sister Kimball could be ushered to their seats. Brother Haycock and I took our seats beside our companions as well. I asked Denzel, what was the cause of the enormous shout? I got the story from her point of view. She said that President Tanner had called the meeting to order at 7 o'clock p.m. and had explained that President and Sister Kimball were unable to attend because of illness. They were to proceed without them in order that their strength might be preserved to join with the saints the following day. Then one young man was called upon to give the opening prayer. With a faith typical of, to these saints in the islands, this young New Zealander gave what my wife described as a rather lengthy prayer. During the course of his prayer, he supplicated the Lord and said, and I quote, we are 3,000 New Zealand youth. We are assembled here having prepared for six months to sing and dance for thy prophet. Will thou heal him and deliver him here? Then as the amen was pronounced, the car entered carrying prison and Sister Kimbo. They were immediately identified by the assemblies of thousand youth who all spontaneously issued that shout for John on having their prayer answered so directly. I was there that night. I saw a living prophet for the first time. President Kimball and his medical doctor, Dr. Russell M. Nelson, who after 40 years later became the prophet. I knew it there and then because the Spirit spoke to me loudly and clearly that Spencer W. Kimball is a true prophet of God. I learned of this truth first before I knew that the church was true. And because of that spiritual experience, I was baptized into the church a few months later. When I became a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I studied and read many of Spencer W. Kimball's teachings and counsel. I love his thing of do it, do it now. One of my favorite books is called Miracle of Forgiveness by Spencer W. Kimball. Many priesthood leaders are still referring to that book today. In fact, some of you may have studied that while in your mission. Many years later, I named one of my sons, Spencer, after Spencer the Bible, the prophet. I testify that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We do, we do have a living prophet today, Russell M. Nelson, and God speaks to him today as he did to Noah, Abraham, and Nephi, even Spencer W. Kimball in the past. Our challenge is to follow him in words and especially in deeds. It is not what we know, but what we do. We can, we can become like our Savior. Prior to living on a mission in June of 2018, we attended the Missionary Training Center for a few days. We were blessed to be taught and inspired by prophets, seers, and revelators. We are honored to speak with our beloved prophet, President Russell M. Nelson. He then asked Luz and I to take a personal message to the people of Papua New Guinea. He said, and I quote, President, they're the good people of Papua New Guinea. I love them. His message was simple, yet very powerful. And everywhere I went, and every time I spoke, I gave his message to all people in Papua New Guinea. They were so touched. 
that the prophet of God, President Nelson, remembers and loves them. And they felt the power of his love. Oh, how I wish you could see their reactions. I testify that he is the true and living prophet today. In October of 2018, in general conference, President Nelson said, and I quote, As Latter-day Saints, we have become accustomed to thinking of church as something that happens in our meeting houses, supported by what happened at home. We need an adjustment to this pattern. It is time for a home-centered church supported by what takes place inside our branch, ward, and stake buildings." Close quote. Did we know that two years later, our chapel would be closed and we would have no church meetings in our chapels? In 2018, we didn't know that we would have the pandemic and all of our temples and chapel will be closed for a while. But we all enjoyed the spiritual experiences we see when we had the sacrament meeting in our home and the spirit we felt therein. We realize now our home is a sacred place, just like the chapels and the temples. President Nelson also taught, and I quote, my dear brothers and sisters, the assault of the adversary are, increase, are increasing exponentially in intensity and in variety. Our need to be in the temple on a regular basis has never been greater. I plead with you to take a prayerful look at how you spend your time. Invest time in your future and in that of your family. If you have reasonable access to a temple, I urge you to find a way to make an appointment regularly with the Lord to be in his holy house, then keep that appointment with exactness and joy. I promise you that the Lord will bring the miracles he knows you need as you make sacrifices to serve and worship in his temples." Close quote. I don't think we knew in 2018 that in 2020, all our temple would be closed and we had to literally make appointments to attend the temple when open again. I like what President Nelson said, to keep that appointments with exactness and joy. I hope we make our appointments and try our very best to keep them, and if we cannot make it, please go back and cancel it so others can attend. I think making an appointment online to attend the temple will be around for a while. Since his call as a prophet in January of 2018, he has used general conference and social media to extend many invitations to us. One of those invitations, he said, and I quote, now to each member of the church, I say, keep on the covenant path. Your commitment to follow the Savior by making covenants with him and then keeping those covenants will open the doors to every spiritual blessings and privilege available to men, women, and children everywhere." Close quote. Brothers and sisters, we are bound to the Savior through the ordinances and covenants we made in the temple. The power of God in us is manifest in our lives when we keep the covenants made in the, with God. It is not what we know, but what we do that will strengthen us and promise blessing will be ours. President Nelson also taught, help us to increase our spiritual capacity to receive revelation when he said, and I quote, in coming days, it will not be possible to survive spiritually without the guiding, directing, comforting, and constant influence of the Holy Ghost." Close quote. How many of us follow his invitation? Do we strive to always have the Spirit with us? Have we learned to recognize and follow the prompting of the Spirit? Again, 
is not what we learned, but what we apply and do. In the October 2021 General Conference, President Nelson again invited all of us to strengthen our spiritual foundation and said, and I quote, my dear brothers and sisters, these are the latter days. If you and I are to withstand the forthcoming and pressures, it is imperative that we each have a firm spiritual foundation built upon the rock of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. So I ask each of you, how firm is your foundation? And what reinforcement to your testimony and understanding of the gospel is needed? Please, be, please believe me when I say that when your spiritual foundation is built up solidly upon Jesus Christ, you have no need to fear. Close quote. President Nelson invited us to reinforce our spiritual foundation so we don't have to worry when the wind and the challenges of life come. In the Book of Mormon, Hillman taught his sons the same thing when he said, and I quote, and now, my sons, remember, remember that it is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God, that he may build your foundation, that when the devil shall send forth his mighty winds, yea, his shaft in the whirlwind, yea, when all his hail and his mighty storm shall beat upon you, it shall have no power over you to drag you down to gulf of misery and endless war because of the rock upon which you are built, which is a sure foundation, a foundation whereon if men built, they cannot fall." Close quote. President Nelson knows the only way to safety is to build our reinforcements, our foundations upon the rock, the Savior and the Redeemer, Jesus Christ. The words of the primary soul remind us that the wise man built his house upon the rock, but the foolish man built his on the sand. May we be wise to build on the rock of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In conclusion, I want to review what we have discussed today so far. First, God speaks to his prophet, and the prophet sees the past, present, and future. Second, President Kimpo said to do it and do it now. Third, President Nelson invited us to remodel our home for a home-centered church, make and keep appointments with God, and make and keep covenants made in the temple. And to survive spiritually, we must have the constant influence of the Spirit and build our reinforcement, our spiritual foundations on our Savior, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, I have given you the why we should follow the prophet. Your responsibility now is to develop the how and what to do. These are but few of President Nelson's invitations. If we haven't started, I plead with you to pick one, just one, and start today. I invite you to exercise your faith in our Savior Jesus Christ and make the necessary changes we need. As you do so, the promised blessing given the prophet will be yours. I pray that we are doers of word, not hearers only, because it is not what we know, but what we do will change us. As disciples of Jesus Christ, our goal is to become like him. Thank you for your faith and example, especially your temple service and temple worship. Thank you for who you are. I testify that Joe Smith is a true prophet of God. President Russell M. Nelson is a true and a living prophet today. Jesus is our Savior and Redeemer. He lives, and this is his church. We have a loving Heavenly Father. I testify these things are true. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.